Hello, in this video there's going to be some you know, sad news, Ryu Jinx seems to now be dead. The popular Switch emulator that was actually immune or seemed to be immune from Nintendo's takedowns because Yuzu a few months ago got taken down and now Ryu Jinx hmm? Still working. I thought Nintendo was taking me down then. But, you know, continuing, if you go to the Ryu Jinx website, you click download it's empty. You go to the GitHub page, where the source code is, it's also empty. So, you know, this is very, very strange, and there's a few posts as well. So, Retro Game Corpse, which is a popular YouTube channel, they make, you know, all sorts of videos. Some of the videos they make are emulation content for Nintendo Switch emulators, and they've been hit with this, uh, well, this is a message from them, and this explains what's happened. So, it says, Hi, friends. Well, it does appear that my worst fears are true and that I am being specifically targeted by Nintendo. You know, for some context, he has, I think, about 500, 550,000 subscribers, so he's not a small boy. They're not going after like, everyone. He's one of the bigger boys in, in this space. Um, but yes, yeah, so they have gone after him. My Wii U video, the Wii U, not even Switch, was taken down and I received another copyright strike, even though this showcase video was no different than all of the tech demos and reviews I have made on this channel previously. I'm still considering a counterclaim under fair use as the video was for educational use, transformative in nature, and had no effect on the market. It was a demonstration of a console no longer for sale, even the Wii U eShop is closed, so the company itself has no means of earning revenue from Wii U sales. And from what I, again, if I recall correctly, it was regarding a Legend of Zelda game. I think that game is Finger Breath of Wild. I think, you know, no, no, that is on Switch. I think that's what it is. So it's like, I mean, Nintendo could hit him with that angle as well, but I understand what he's saying and I agree with him. However, I am reluctant to open that can of worms for a multi billion dollar corporation. And the next step would be to file legal action. Yeah, this is, a, you know, one of the issues. Even if you're in the right, they'll just bury you in legal work and just proceedings that you're just basically go bankrupt before you can actually make a difference so that's the other thing so it's not just about right or wrong at the very least this means i am going to change how i approach future videos i will no longer show any nintendo game on screen which is a shame because i love using those games for my hardware demonstrations don't know how that will play out when it comes to showing things like ESDE front-end themes that contain nintendo characters but for now i'm going to focus on actual gameplay i am also going for the videos I'm working on and blurring out any Nintendo game content as a precaution, even innocuous content like NES games. Unfortunately, this is going to delay some video releases. My latest video should be up right now, but instead I have to re-edit and re-upload the video first. I know this is disappointing news, but with now two strikes on my channel, don't really have any other choice except to adjust accordingly. Thanks for your understanding. So this is what Retro Game Corpse has been hit with. Here's a little, you know, piece of information by G by GDK Chan. GDK Chan is the creator of Re Re you know Reugent right here. So GDK Chan. And so yesterday, GDK Chan was contacted by Nintendo and offered an agreement to start working on the project, remove the organization and all related assets in he's in control of while awaiting confirmation on whether he would take this agreement the organization has been removed so i think it's safe to say what the outcome is rather than leave you with only panic and speculation i decided to write this short message to give some closure these words are my own i don't want to speak for anyone else here just so just remember that while reading, so this was on the Discord page group, by the way, thank you to everyone who has contributed code, documentation, or issue reports to the project. Thank you all for following us throughout the development. I was able to learn a lot of really neat things about games that I love, enjoy them with renewed qualities and in unique circumstances. I'm sure you all have experiences that are similarly special. I'm extending my own massive thanks to our moderation team, who have been here through some rough circumstances and always found ways to make light of it. So this is what's interesting to me. So the you know developer creator of Ryu Jinx, along obviously there's a community, but this is the you know, creator, he was contacted by Nintendo, offered an agreement, 
I'm interested to know, if we will ever find out, what this agreement was. Was it a, a matter of, here's X amount of money, stop, or come work for us? We're doing some other project, maybe we need some emulation you know, skill set. Or is it a matter of, we won't sue your you know, ass out of existence, and you, you take it out. I feel like it's that one, not the other one, but we don't know. Because the other interesting thing is, back in February, so there's some information right here, let me get the exact specifics, and if we go, because we had the user emulator, which was taken down, let me go to, yeah, here, so on the standard, the website standard.co.uk, the user emulator, uh, back in February, they sued creators of the user switch emulator, accusing them of unlawfully circumventing technological measures designed to prevent game piracy. So Yuzu was a bit more sort of, you know, you know, on the legal side, Wii U Jinx has tried to be very, very careful. But I mean, they didn't have a Patreon page, but you know, they do, I don't know how long they've had it for, but I know Yuzu was making money off it, you know, a lot earlier than Wii U Jinx was. So again, not crazy man with money, but they're making something. And but this is what interests me about at least about the user case. Just weeks later, user settled, agreeing to cease development, which they did, and they haven't been developing since, and pay two point four million dollars. I'm wondering, like, can you do afford that? The developers did they actually make that much money and beyond to be able to pay? That was just some crazy number that Nintendo found out there. They know they'll never be able to pay for it, and just to scare everyone else off. Like, I'm really interested in that side of it as well. And so. You know, from that, you know, from Yuzu, we had Suyu, which is another emulator, and Suyu is just like a branch of Yuzu. And but if you go to get Suyu on the GitHub page, the latest version is about six months old. Sudachi emulator is again another Yuzu offshoot. If you go to download, uh, scroll down, you can download it right here. But if you go to the GitHub page, this is also 404 taken down as well. So that's you know, the crazy thing, so you have Ryu Jinx, the king of Switch emulators, seems to be taken down. They were working on an iOS port. We can probably assume that's, you know, safe to assume that that is now dead in the water. And, uh, you know, what does this mean for Switch emulation? They are really hammered down on Switch emulation. Considering we are probably 6 to 12 months away from a Switch 2. Uh, I mean, most likely Switch 2, I guess it's going to happen most likely have full backwards compatibility in my opinion so it's a you know it's really protecting it on switch 2 as well and i feel like they'll at the same time sell a switch and support games on the switch i think kind of like how they've done with like initially ps4 and ps5 where ps5 games they had a ps4 version you know as well initially for a good two three years and they've kind of now just gone you know entirely on the ps5 generation I feel like that's going to be a huge, huge thing. The other thing is, is the preservation of these games long term. Because it's not just about piracy, it's about 20 years later, PS1 games, you can get the odd one on you know, PSN store. Most of, most of them, you can't. So it really, unless you're buying an old PS1, then getting the game somewhere physically, you know, you can't really do anything about it. So it was, this is a way of preserving that. And, you know, it really works well when there's, an immense amount of development that goes on and over years they refine it to the point where like PCSX2 emulated for PlayStation 2 very efficient runs very well literally every game you know works fine on there um, PS3 emulator is coming a long way probably another five to ten years it'll be very very good it's still very good but it's gonna be amazing then and that's and that would have been the case with switch emulator as well switch emulators have got good but obviously this has um, stifled the development of it so i feel like we're going to get some offshoots of reunions 100 percent people that have the code and it's pretty probably can get it from an alternative source there might be some you know forks of it on github as well that are still up and running but the question is how long is it going to be supported for reunions was consistently supported sue you an offshoot of yuzu was no longer supported i mean though it's, it's been six months since an update that's the thing we're going to get offshoots of Wii Jinx, but whether or not it's going to be supported, I doubt it. The other thing is, what I think we'll see, is offshoots of Wii Jinx that might even be paid. Some people think, you know what, Wii Jinx down, 
people are desperate right now. Let me sell it for five, ten pound. Then maybe even if they have a like a version of the iOS version, and five, ten pound, sell like a hundred thousand copies, get half mil, million, or even just a hundred grand or ten grand, and you know basically just run away with the money. So I think that's going to be another major thing as well. So let me know, you know, how you feel about all this side of emulation. Nintendo going after the YouTube creators, content creators, uh, who are showcasing the gameplay. Uh, you know, one thing I want to put out there, I think we know that most people that are downloading emulators, nobody wants to talk about it from this perspective, especially the big YouTubers, but the ones that are downloading emulators, they're pirated, 100%. And I think there's an element of preservation in there, but I think majority of people are 100% pirated, especially when it's still a fresh system like this. Um, you know, they 100% are. Um, just the way it is. And obviously Nintendo doesn't like it. Nintendo never has. Sony and Microsoft have always been a bit more relaxed on, on this side of it compared to Nintendo. Just the way it is. Nintendo just, you know, operates in, I guess, kind of more of a strict professional manner. The other companies don't. So, yeah, let me know. We know what, what your thoughts on this. What you think will happen next down in the comments. And if we'll get a new Switch emulator before the year's out, a major one with a proper team with proper support. I think the one way they could get it really to work is if they were not in a country that Nintendo could easily sue them in that does not extradite to the US, uh, you know, or Japan. Operate from there. Yeah, YouTube, my YouTube video might get taken down might get taken down from GitHub, but if they have their own website that's hosted in that country or somewhere else, again, that's going to require backing, funding. So one, you need expertise in programming and emulation programming of all things and to have that keen interest in it, but then also to be in that you know country or to move that to that country like that. It's, it's unlikely, but that's the one way I see potentially working. And I think it'll be interesting over the next few months what happens. Um, so yeah, as usual, uh, just a quick video, or quickish, to give you an update of Wii U Jinx. Seems to be officially dead in the water. But on Brighton News, my Patreon page is coming out very soon. So stay tuned for that with all exclusive goodness. And see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.